Hey guys, this is Dimitri with Joe's Gaming and Electronics and in today's video I will be doing a complete teardown of an iPad Pro 6. In this video, all the tools that you will see me using, we do sell them on our website. The link will be down in the description below. If you guys ever have any problems where you want to send in your iPad in for a repair, we do offer a mail-in repair service as well. With all that being said, let's get to it. So we're going to pull off the screen first. To do so, make sure that the iPad is completely powered off and we will be using a heat gun set to 250 degrees Fahrenheit with 50 air blow. Turn the iPad upside down so that it's facing you so that the power button is right here on the end and the volume down and up button are right there. We're gonna start by prying this side first using one of these ninja stars that we have on our website. First things first, let's go ahead and heat this outer corner up. Make sure that you're only applying heat to the outer corner. In this case, it doesn't matter because the screen is defective and the frame is bent. So we're gonna go ahead ahead and part out this iPad. So while I'm heating it up, I'm just gonna work the star in like so. Once the star is in, you can start prying up while applying heat. Once you notice that the screen is starting to peel from the frame, I'm gonna pop one of these plastic clips in here, remove the star, and then the rest of the work will be done with the plastic clips. Sometimes, depending on what's easier, you can just rotate the iPad around as you go along with this process. When we get up top here, be really careful so that you don't damage the Face ID ribbon. In this case, we are trying to save the board. So if the board is good, that means the Face ID ribbon has to be working. If you have a good screen and you're just trying to remove the screen to access the charger port or whatever repair it is that you're trying to perform, make sure that you go nice and slow when you're removing the screen. If you go a little too fast, you could end up cracking it. It's really tough to get it back in, so I'm just gonna pop the star in here, fry it up just enough to get this back in, like so. Once we made it back to the first point where we originally started prying the screen, I'm gonna try my best to keep this in view of the camera. We're gonna go ahead. So I'm gonna stand it up and just slowly start applying pressure. So this is how I'm holding it, one by the screen, the other one by the frame, and just kind of start heating. And while you're heating, go ahead and just pull it apart ever so slightly. You wanna be very careful so that you don't damage any ribbons. As you're peeling the screen, if you're able to, you could get in there with a flathead and start removing any adhesive. Once the screen is pretty much peeled off, you want to make sure that the iPad is in the same position when you just started removing the screen. So make sure that the power button is right here at the bottom facing you. And what we're going to do is pull the screen forward. This is the face ID ribbon. You want to be very careful. It's a really common issue that somebody rips it. We're going to be using a Phillips screwdriver, a 1.5 for the two little screws. The screws are pretty tiny, so make sure that you do not lose them. Once the screws are out of the way, we'll remove this little clip and using a plastic spudger, we're going to disconnect the face ID ribbon like so. Once that is done, fold the screen in half and we're going to disconnect the display and the touch ribbons. Same thing using a 1.5. using a plastic spudger. If you're replacing the screen, you're going to need this ribbon to attach to a new screen if you do buy one. Last thing to make sure that the screen is unhooked, remove. Pull 
plastic spudger, go ahead and disconnect these two ribbons. Once that is complete, the screen has been successfully removed. Alrighty, now that the screen is off, the next thing that we're gonna do is remove this screw and just kind of lift the board slightly so that we get rid of all the power that is in the board. It's not necessary, but I like to do it just in case the iPad decides that it wants to turn on. But you go in with a 1.5 millimeter flathead screwdriver, just lift it slightly, nothing too major or too serious and you sh that should be plenty once that is complete we'll go ahead peel this completely off set that aside and first things first we're gonna disassemble and remove the charger port that is located right here at the bottom you can go ahead and use a plastic spudger to disconnect it and then remove these two little screws down below That's all for the charger port. Now we're pretty much just going to end up disconnecting every ribbon that we see. So we'll disconnect that. Disconnecting the speakers is fairly easy. You just want to go underneath and pry up. Remove this screw. Clip as well. Make sure that we disconnect these two ribbons using a plastic spudger. If I do remember correctly, there should be some screws under here. So I'm going to just peel it up, double check. Sure enough, there is. Good thing I checked. That would have been embarrassing trying to take this off and not knowing why it's not coming up. But we're not going to talk about that because we know that there are a couple screws there. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm starting from the bottom and I'm working my way up on this iPad. Once those are removed, we'll go ahead and start removing these. Hey, this is Joe from The Sauna. If this video brought you value, please support us by buying parts, tools, refurbished electronics, or sending your device in for repairs so we can keep offering you free repair tutorials. Back to the video. And we can start disconnecting these antennas. Once the antennas are disconnected, disconnect the ribbons and the speakers. I'm using the pointy end on the spudger for the speakers and the antennas. It works really well. Alrighty, so now we're gonna switch to a T3 driver and we're gonna start working on the cameras. This is a T3 bit. I just used the flathead to pop a camera assembly, at least the front camera out. flip this upside down and start removing these screws here. These are still Phillips 1.5. Once that is complete, we'll unhook the ribbons. And then right under here, there's a couple more. Sorry, three more. All right, once that is complete, we're going to remove the remainder of the screws, the ones for the power button and the volume up and down button. And then we'll be able to pull the back cameras. There's the power button. Pop the cameras out just to get them out of the way if they won't pop out. I think for this one, there might be another screw. There sure is. Here are the cameras. The 
the volume up and down and the individual buds for that as well these kind of look oh no they're different so this is the power button it's a lot more bigger and here's the volume button i'm just gonna peel this ribbon back get it off the board double check make sure that there's no ribbons or any screws plugged into the board the board is adhered to the frame so it's gonna take a little bit of effort to get the board up but we should be able to do it so with the spudger i'm gonna go in at this end and just start prying up i guess this one had some mercy on us today I'm just going in with the spudger right underneath this one. Like so now that the motherboard is completely re removed, all that we have left to do for this teardown is just the battery. Once we remove the battery, we are pretty much done with this complete teardown. So for the batteries, if you look really close, it's hard to tell, but there's like these little ribbons. It's hard to see on camera, but in person you could really see them. What you're trying to do with these is just kind of peel them and pull them out. It's the adhesive that holds the battery to the frame. With this process, you want to be really careful and pull slow because if you go a little too fast, you might end up ripping it and it'll be a pain to get the battery out. But if you're able to remove all these strips, the battery should literally fall right out. For this, I'm going to use some tweezers. Just try to pull it simultaneously at the same time so that you're not leaving any little strips behind. and just repeat the same process going all the way around they're on these ends so just go ahead and do that do it carefully so that you're not ripping it so that the battery removal is a lot easier Essentially, when you get this far and they're just kind of ripping, being a little bit pain in the butt, you could get in there with a spudger. Just be very careful not to puncture the battery. Go ahead and remove the rest of the adhesive. Once that is completed, all that's left to do is just peel the rest of the battery, just like the terminals where you have the ribbons for the power that connects to the board. We'll go ahead and just get in there with the spudger, peel up. Also what works very well is if you grab one of these plastic clips, you could get in there and just kind of slide it like you would if you're peeling a screen. Just break the adhesive. Or I just noticed this. This is something new. Go ahead and pull that. <laughs> Look at that. Learn something new. I'm going to assume that there's one on this side. There is. So let's give that a shot. Apple does a really good job of improving every model. Alrighty, now the battery is removed and all you are left is with just the back cover. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via email. Once again, all the tools that I was using in this teardown video for the Apple iPad Pro 6th generation, we do sell all these tools on our website. The links will be down in the description below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we do also offer a mail-in repair service if you ever have any problems with your iPad. You are more than welcome to send it in and have us look at it. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you guys love what we do, please support us. You guys can click on the links that we have on the end screen. You guys can buy our parts, sales, or service so we can continue to make great videos for you guys for many more years. Thank you.